Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chuck Larson, and I'm very, very honored to be with you uh, with all of our fellow veterans. I'm an Iraq veteran, a uh, Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army Reserve, and we're honored to call our good friend, Joni Ernst, who has had a, a life and a career of distinction, having served in the combat zone, led her unit and her troops into combat. And what I find fascinating is it's the same unit that her father, who served for 27 years as an Army Ranger, served in as well. <coughs> And then, and then our, uh, the other great part about the Ernst family is that uh, her husband, Gail, uh, served for 27 years as an airborne ranger and uh, leading troops throughout the world from the Middle East to the swamps of Florida, training young rangers. And uh, for those of us in the room that know about our, our ranger corps, uh, there's, there's nothing like that. Absolutely the best. Oh. So, uh, Over the last two weeks, Joni has been on active duty up at Fort McCoy, leading Iowans and, and very committed to, uh, to her service. And uh, a couple good friends of ours that many of you in this room will know, General Morty Phillips and uh, General Dardis, former Adjutant General of the Iowa National Guard, recently drafted a letter to the editor that I'd like to share with you that I really believe sums it up very, very well. It reads as follows. The third largest category of spending in the federal budget is for defense, $800 billion. It makes up 22% of the nation's annual budget, and those dollars fund the most capable military in the world. It's a dangerous and changing world, and we need leaders in Washington who know firsthand how the military and the real world work. State Senator Joni Ernst is running for the United States Senate and has a lifetime of military service. Joni's a lieutenant colonel in the Iowa National Guard. She's a company commander, and when Iowa sent some of its bravest men and women into Kuwait and southern Iraq in 2003 for Operation Iraqi Freedom, Joni led that very company bravely and served for over a year, and every one of her soldiers in the company returned home safely to their families upon completion of the tour. Joni has continued to serve and led the largest battalion in the state, commanding over 1,200 members of the Guard. There are over 100 United States Senators, 57 have law degrees, and 55 list their occupation as the law. Not only do attorneys dominate the U.S. Senate, their numbers are on the rise. Of the 100 senators, only 18 have worn our country's uniform, and just three have served in combat. The number of veterans serving in Congress and the U.S. Senate are declining. Not long ago, military experience was a virtual requirement for elective office at the federal level. Now, it is a rarity. Joni Ernst's military experience and leadership ability will serve Iowa and America well. We're proud to know Joni, we're proud to have served with her, and we're proud to recommend her to you as our next United States Senator. Lieutenant General Ron Dardis and Major General Maury Phillips. I'd like to share a, a brief taping that I think many of you can relate with. Uh, and we all know Joni and have worked with her over the years. And this is about the call to serve and the call Iowans uh, have to help other Iowans. I have been so blessed in my lifetime. And so service is very important to me. I now have the opportunity to give back and thank others for everything that, that I have been able to achieve. And so I do that by serving in a number of different service organizations in my community, whether it's a court of honor and putting up flags on Memorial Day, whether it's serving as a Sunday school teacher and a confirmation teacher. Others did that for me. I want to do that for others now. Whether it's serving my state and nation as a member of the Iowa Army National Guard, responding to tornadoes or responding to floods. It's Iowans helping the Iowans, and that's, that's important to me. Service is important. We just, we have to do it. I'd now like to welcome to the microphone Chris Fox, who is the chair of Veterans for Joni. Chris served with, with uh, distinction for 27 years in the Iowa National Guard, retiring as the Sergeant Major of the Aviation Battalion. Chris. <laughs> okay. 
see a lot of friendly faces out here, and I'm glad you all came out today. I uh, thought about what I was going to say, and I changed it this morning on the way here. Uh, it's from my heart. Um, you know, when uh, I think about Joni, I know that she would say, keep it short, <laughs> because she's humble. And no matter how I do, in the end, she'll tell me I did a great job, because she says, because I know she's kind. And uh, once in a while when I forget to uh, check in or uh, go help out when I should, she calls to see how I'm doing. It's because she cares. And uh, when I went and ran a marathon with her in the desert uh, in boots and full uniform, I realized how tough she was. <laughs> and she finished ahead of me. And if you've ever watched her lead, you know she's a leader. And uh, if you've ever watched her run for the U.S. Senate, you know she's a winner. The next United States Senator from Iowa, Joni Ernst. all of you for being here today, especially those of you that have served this great nation. Um, I get very passionate about a few things, and one of those things are the members of our military, those that have raised their right hand and have taken that oath to serve, whether you are enlisted, whether you're a warrant officer, whether you're an officer. I thank each and every one of you for, uh, for all that you have done for this great nation, all that you continue to contribute to our freedom here in the United States of America. Sergeant Major Fox, thank you. Um, I've known the Sergeant Major for many, many years uh, when he served as a first sergeant of the 186 Military Police Company way back in the day. Um, a number of friends that are here today, and I can't name all of you, but uh, Chris Fox served overseas the same time I was serving as the company commander of the 1168 Transportation Company. He and his company were stationed up at Baghdad International Airport, so whenever we made runs north into Baghdad, uh, Chris and his company commander would put my soldiers, myself and my soldiers, up in their area. Um, we took care of each other. Whenever the MPs came down into Kuwait, where we had our area staged, they would come stay with us. Um, it's Iowans helping Iowans, and we saw that every single day that we were deployed. Another member that I'd like to recognize is my first sergeant, First Sergeant Dave Carstens. Um, he is now a sergeant major, still serving in the Iowa Army National Guard. Um, he will always be my top. He will always be my top. So let's thank these gentlemen for their service. So again, thanks to everyone. I see a number of wonderful faces that are here today. Those that I continue to serve with in the Iowa Army National Guard. Those that have served on active duty, like my husband, Gail. Um, a number of other folks, but again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your service. What I wanted to talk about today is a little bit about the Senate campaign, but really about service. Um, this is the, the first time that I've really seen the entire run of this, of this ad. Um, I did have a soldier while we were away. Some of, amazingly, some of my soldiers do follow this stuff on Facebook. And so on some downtime, one of the captains, he pulled this up. He's like, ma'am, have you seen this? I was like, no, I have not seen that. Unfortunately, we didn't have sound. So we were able to watch the clip, but no, no words or music. So very nice. I like this. I like this ad. Um, it is something that I feel very strongly about service. Um, a number of you have served in our armed forces. Many of you have not, but you serve in other ways, whether it's supporting candidates out on the trail, trying to do the right thing for our nation, our local governments, whether you're serving as a Sunday school teacher. My husband and I still, still serve as Sunday school teachers and confirmation teachers. And however we can help our communities, 
that's what's important. Iowans taking care of other Iowans. We know that uh, we have a number of issues in the military today, especially as we look at the veterans affairs debacle, things that have gone on in other states. I just met with a group of, a small group of veterans uh, off to the side, and I can say that all of them report that what we see here in Iowa is a very good VA system. We have wonderful care. Again, it's Iowans who care about Iowa service members. But what we do have lacking is maybe the numbers and the accessibility, making sure that we get our military members right in to see a doctor as soon as possible. So there are some things that we can work on here, even in the state of Iowa, but again, making sure that they have accessibility, great care, but once our veterans here in Iowa get into the system, they are being cared for. We know that. Um, so kudos to our physicians, our nurses within the system here in Iowa. I wish I could say that in every state out there, but unfortunately, we have had many, many issues, and we need elected officials that are willing to take on these problems head on. Not ignore them, not bury their heads in the sand. We need to address these issues head on and find solutions that will work for our veterans. I'd like to talk a little bit about what we did over the past two weeks um, up at Fort McCoy, Wisconsin. I do lead a battalion and all four of my companies were present at Fort McCoy the past two weeks. And they are wonderful soldiers and they were working their hearts out. Um, so we have a transportation company, they were driving convoy lanes, uh, making sure they know how to react in case they encounter uh, difficult situations. We had a military police company which was up there working on uh, non-lethal means of, of tamping down uh, riots or insurrections. Uh, they were working on those things as well as escorting. They do a lot of escorting and force protection for convoys. They did some of that. We had a maintenance company up there and believe me, they were turning wrenches and they were maintaining our vehicles. And if they don't do their job, the rest of us don't move. So we are thankful for all that they did for us. And they also participated in a convoy live fire exercise, which means live ammunition, out on a lane, uh, engaging targets, and they did a phenomenal job. And then I had a headquarters company, and bless their hearts, uh, they were working on a command post exercise. And for those of you that have been through command post exercises, you know it's not that fun. It is mentally taxing, you're running about 24 hours a day, and you're addressing hypothetical situations that come up, and how you address those situations and make sure that they are supporting the warrior. So we had all types of activities going on 24 hours a day. It was a phenomenal training opportunity. The weather was perfect. But again, I want to emphasize that our Iowa Army National Guard members were working very, very hard. And they work hard because they want to do it for you. They want to do it for the state of Iowa. And they want to do it to make sure that they are ready should they be called up in a time of need for our nation or our state. Um, as the video talked about a little bit here, not only do we fulfill a federal mission when required, but we have state missions here. Whether it's flooding over in Cedar Rapids, flooding over in western Iowa along the Missouri River, whether it's tornadoes such as we saw at Parkersburg, our Iowa Guardsmen are responding to a number of those instances. So we have great uh, National Guardsmen, we have great reservists here in the state, we have wonderful active duty members that are serving abroad and in other states, but bottom line, we have to make sure that we are taking care of our veterans. And that's what we want to talk about today, is care for our veterans. Uh, again, all of our veterans have raised their right hand. They've said, I am going to do this for my state and my nation. We need to make sure that we are caring for them as well as they have cared for us. So to all of you again, thanks so much for all that you have done and continue to do for this great nation. We have an opportunity today today to start working towards a November election, which is very, very important. Um, we have to set the stage for America. We have to make sure that we have a strong national defense. 
Let's look at what has occurred. The past two weeks that I've served on duty, I've gotten snippets of information coming about world events. We have tragedies going on in Ukraine and Russia. We have a Malaysian plane that was shot down um, by pro-Russia militants. Uh, we have Israel and Hamas. Um, we have many, many things going on in this world which are very tragic. We need a strong national defense. It's I believe that wholeheartedly, that we have to maintain a strong national defense. We have to have a strong reserve and national guard. But what we see right now is an administration that doesn't believe that. And we are looking at drawing down our troops to pre-World War II levels. I don't believe that that is the right thing to do. So again, let's maintain that strong national defense. Let's work for our veterans and making sure that we are keeping our promises to those veterans. Very, very important for us to do. So at this time, I would like to close and be able to spend some time visiting with you um, individually. But I want to thank you all again so much. Um, there are forms on the tables. I think Chuck has one here. He's a lovely man of white. Um, but there are forms here. So if you would like to assist with our campaign and making sure we're taking care of veterans and keeping our promises to our veterans, um, I would love to have your help in whatever means that, that you can provide. Uh, whether it's voting early, um, absentee voting, whether it's door knocking, put a sign out in your yard, putting a bumper sticker on your car, letting others know that you are supporting me and my campaign. Very important. This will be a critical election this fall, and I would appreciate your support and your vote. So let's make sure it happens. Um, if Take time and thank a veteran today. I would appreciate it if you did that. And we're going to get right started on this campaign again. I've had a wonderful two weeks with my soldiers. Um, I look forward to getting back out on the campaign trail and making sure that I win this election. I am doing it for you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming this morning.